Remember that time you wanted to paint your house in a neutral gray and you bought the paint and you brought it home and you started painting and then realized the color you'd selected was less gray and more lavender? I'm sure this has happened to many of us and I can't promise for sure that it won't happen again, but we can ask Sharon Greck for tips to help us pick out the color we really want for our next paint project. Sharon, I hate to say it, it's happened to me and I've been hosting the show for quite some time. So let's start by talking about, uh, before we get into this lesson, what's happening behind you? Because I know you've got a project underway. Yes, it's pretty obvious, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I, <laughs> I am doing a big, well, not a big reno, but we're gonna be refinishing all of our floors, painting the cabinets, obviously painting the walls and when I removed a cabinet you can see do as I say not as I do we painted around the cabinet before so I see my color from 20 years ago those beautiful warm tones I see my warm gray from 10 years ago and now it's time for a change so I'm going to try out a few other samples so good timing for this segment that's awesome though it was a very happy yellow but I love the fact that you can keep it real and we can even see you know the designers even have this stuff going on so it's good let's get to the lesson at hand now share uh, learning how to pick a paint color is tricky. Yes, it is tricky, Tracy. I'm not lying if I say that, but it's also tricky to pick any material when you're doing a home reno project, especially when you're looking at neutrals. I think it's far easier when you want to choose like a purple or a green or a red or a blue than it is when you want to choose a neutral because the word neutral is actually really deceiving. We think it means lack of color, but in the world of paint and in the world of decorating, it actually doesn't. Those beautiful neutrals that we love so much actually do have a relation to the color wheel. They're not actually on the color wheel, but they do have a relation to that. And the colors are made up with other pigments, reds, blues, greens, oranges, as well as black and white. So it's definitely a little bit, a little bit deceiving. But again, if you think of neutrals as having a relationship with the color wheel, it really helps you. Yeah, so what you're saying is basically neutral is not really neutral. I mean, I've got a bunch of neutral uh, paint chips here and you can see that it can get kind of confusing there. Like there are a lot of ways you can go and that's why your gray sometimes ends up lavender. So how do we find the right one right? in that sea of grays? Exactly, Trace. It is really confusing, but at the same time, it's all those beautiful colors that make those neutrals so complex. That is what's so appealing about them. When you think about, you know, just mixing a straight gray with black and white pigment, which we don't actually do really in paint, um, it can be very neutral technically, but it's also kind of sterile and boring. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to add pattern, you need to add add other colors, you need to add contrast to really rev it up. I mean, I wore my my grayish, my grout fit as my daughter would call it. <laughs> think about the undertones, the temperature. Don't just think about the gradation like I have in my sweater, you know, from light to dark. I find people so often get so worried. Oh, is that gonna look too dark in my house or is that gonna look too light? And they focus this way on, on sort of the values as opposed to thinking about the underlying color and the undertone and the temperature, which is also so really important. Okay, so that is key. And I, I think you'll notice, like, if you just did the white and the black, the gray looks flat. And, and none of us are really looking for flat, right? Yep. So we're gonna talk about undertones later in the show. But what do you mean by color temperature? Because that's key. Okay, so color temperature, Tracy, if you remember our color wheel, we know that it's pretty much split in half. We've got the warm colors, the reds, oranges, and yellows, and then we've got the blues, the purples, and, and, and greens. Greens are a bit funky, as we know. They kind of go on both sides. But for the most part, the color wheel is split like that, and although the neutrals aren't, again, they're not on the color wheel, it's not so obvious, they do actually have a relation, as I said, to those warm and cool colors in the color wheel, and knowing that will really help you to determine the tone. And in fact, I wanted to really just dive into that. I've actually sent down to you two of Benjamin Moore's most popular neutrals, grays, and we're going to kind of just take a look at them individually and separately to see if you can really notice the color temperature, whether one's warmer or cooler. So take a look, Trace, at that first one on the left. 
the, the, actually, I think it's the only one on the wall right now. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look at that one and describe it to me. And this is how committed she is. She comes down here and puts this stuff up so she can test me from home. You see what she does? <laughs> but, the, okay, so we've got one on the wall right now, and it's like, it looks share, like, almost like a beige. It's looking a little warm. It's looking a little taupey. You can tell it's a gray, but it feels like a warmer gray. See, you've been watching the show. You can <laughs> see that. I love it. You can see... You can see the warmth in it, right? I mean, it does have warmth in it. And again, we say it's a gray. It's Revere Pewter, which is one of Benjamin Moore's most popular color colors. And people love it because it kind of bridges that warm and cool. And it can actually look different in different lighting, which we'll talk about later. But again, yes, it does have the warmth. But why don't you take a look at the other one on the, on the table and kind of look at it separately and describe our other color. Okay, so this is uh, obviously another gray, but it almost looks like a baby blue. So it almost, there's a, there's a blue tone to it. I would say that this is a little bit on the cooler side. Absolutely, Trace. That is Coventry Gray, and in relation, it is definitely more on the cooler side. Um, it, it doesn't actually have a lot of cool in the formula, but it does read more cool. It's a bit more of a, of, of a neutral gray. They put them up together so you can really, really see. Because sometimes when you're looking at that chip in the store of Coventry Gray or Revere Pewter, you, you look at an individual and it just looks neutral. So it's not until you put it in relation with other colors and other furnishings that you can really see the color temperature. So how does that look now? I'm just you happy I got it on. That yeah. Okay, <laughs> look at you put them side by side and I mean these look like completely different colors. They don't even both look like gray anymore. You can see this one is glaringly warm and this one is glaringly cool and this is what trips us up. If you're not if you're not able to put the colors side by side, you get it home and you've got something you thought was gray and it's blue or you thought it was gray and it's yellow. So they look very different here side by side. That Exactly. Comparing is a really great um, tip. Like compare it to whatever you can, but certainly mix it in. As I was saying before, instead of just looking this way, look at the colors beside and on the on the strip chip, on the fan deck. Look at the other colors and get an idea and bring a few of them home. Look at Coventry Gray and Revere Pewter, which you've probably seen lots of photos of. They're both beautiful colors in their own right, and they can look very neutral in space, but make sure you're choosing the one that kind of blends in with the furnishings that you have. So take a look at it that way for sure. And then, you know, I think it's important to think that color on the wall takes up the most visual space really in the room, so it really does set the tone. And that's why sometimes you walk into a space all neutral, but you're like, mm, something's wrong. It's usually because the undertones are mismatching. It's a gut test, it's a feel test, and the more you get it wrong, yeah. the more you will get it right. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I think that what we've done, we created this neutral and gray card, and I think that it really helps people. So if you take advantage of some of the color tools that we have online and at the paint stores, you can really see this curated palette of some of the most popular neutrals. And again, Tracy, like we just did in studio, when you look at them together, you get a really good sense right away. That's a little bit warmer. That's a little bit cooler. So again, it helps to narrow down those options for you. Sharon, I feel like I've gone through a university lecture. I should have been taking notes.